Hello, thank you for listening. This is the near-death experience of Marie, and this experience occurred on December 13th of 2012 and was documented on February 11th, 2017. Open quote. On December 13th, 2012, I was preparing for Christmas. I was stressed, and it was when exiting a shop that the accident happened. I stepped into the crosswalk and started dashing across the street when I was hit by a motor scooter. I have no memory of this at all, a total void. I know the facts only from the police report. I was hit by the scooter and fell into a coma. It was at the intensive care unit that I saw myself leaving my body through the top of my head. I was looking at myself from about two meters above my hospital bed. I could see my body attached to a bunch of lines connected to some machines. I knew that it was me, but I was somebody else. It is difficult to explain, like a kind of doubling up. It was me without being me. Then I saw my life scrolling past. I saw only very pleasant times and I was passed by and I passed by that very quickly. It was more like feeling than seeing. It was kind it was like a kind of teleportation at incredible speed. I think of where I was as a tunnel because it was round and everything was dark. I sensed that at the end there was a light that was immensely beautiful, filled with love and serenity. It was just a sensation, but a very powerful one, like knowing there was a wonderful world at the end of the tunnel. In a split second, I entered this light. Then I became this light of sparkling brightness. I saw the light, but I also was the light. I was a kind of energy filled with, all caps, love, protection, and knowledge. I can access this powerful sensation even now. Whenever I try to speak about it, the feeling is overwhelming. I felt that I was surrounded by hierarchies of angels. They were sending me, all caps, infinite love, immense protection, and their knowledge. The love was more powerful than anything I had ever felt before, even though I am a passionate sort of person. The angelic crowd became even larger. I sensed that there were great spirits surrounding me and sending me their knowledge. The most powerful spirits were in the forefront. They were very ancient consciousnesses who taught a kind of universal Kabbalistic knowledge. They taught me the divine and universal knowledge that I, an earthly human, was immensely important to them. Let me, let me read that again. They taught me the divine and universal knowledge that I, an earthly human, was immensely important to them. I realized that I was in another world. I asked them who they were. There, time was very long. My great-grandmother and great-grandfather appeared on my right. I hardly knew them, as they had passed away when I was a child. But there they were, holding hands. They sent me even more love. It was ecstasy. I asked them where my sister was. My sister had committed suicide 27 years ago. They all left for a few moments and then reappeared. My great-grandparents let go of each other's hands. Behind them and very far away, I saw a sparkling light with something like wings. I knew that this was my sister, even though I couldn't exactly see her. All around her, there was the same love that I felt surrounding me. She also was surrounded by a dark circle of angelic hierarchies. My great-grandparents told me that she had needed to go through this, but that now she was finally ready to come help members of her family. Then I grew immensely large with huge wings that started to emerge from me. 
like a phoenix, I was ready to fly away. This sensation was not only impressive, but was extraordinarily pleasant. Then these wings very rapidly retracted back into me. At that point, I traveled all the way back to Earth, into the ICU, and down I fell into the shell of my body. I woke up in intensive care without knowing who I was or why I was there. Nearby, there was an old man groaning. This is where my nightmare began because certain members of the medical community were hostile to me. I learned later on that this medical community had thought that my cranial trauma had been so serious that there would be no chance I could return to consciousness. They did not like to be proved wrong and took it out on me, telling me to just be quiet and more. Today, I realize that I had an extraordinary experience. Now, I have this certitude that death doesn't exist, because when we leave this world, we go to a new world of love. I feel that they made me come back, because I still have things to do in this life. Today, I'm thankful to them that they were there. I'm happy, and I thank heaven for bringing me so much joy, all caps. But there is another certitude that the awareness of the French medical community has to be awakened absolutely. They still consider me a nut when I talk about my experience. What I needed when I woke up from such an experience was somebody to listen to me, not somebody to drug me with antidepressants so as to prevent me from thinking about the experience. What I needed, they had no idea about. End quote. Wow. And isn't that awesome how she had those uh, ancient spirits there helping her and filling her with love protection and knowledge that must have been incredible there are some uh, questions here question at the time of your experience was there an associated life-threatening event answer yes accident direct head injury life-threatening event but not clinical death traffic accident i was hit by a scooter while crossing the street i fell on my head and lost consciousness due to serious head trauma Question, how do you consider the content of your experience? Answer, entirely pleasant. Question, rating your consciousness. Answer, the sensation of being exceptional and filled with knowledge. I never felt that in my life. And when were you at your highest level of consciousness? Answer, at each moment during this experience, I felt an extreme lucidity. Today, Four years after my accident, I have more and more the impression that this experience was the most extraordinary one in my life. Question, did time seem to speed up or slow down? Answer, when I asked them who they were, this seemed a very long time to me. When I asked where my sister was, a certain time went by, but it was mostly because they left me alone during those moments. Question, did you pass into or through a tunnel? Answer, yes. It's kind of like teleportation. Yes, you could call it a tunnel, but it was more like a sensation of passing into another dimension. It was a vertical, dark passage. I was leaving in this vertical passage, which was guiding me toward the sparkling light. Question. Did you see an unearthly light? Answer, yes. I was attracted by this sparkling light, which was vibrating love and protection. Question, did you seem to enter some other unearthly world? Answer, yes. It was like a different, inexplicable dimension, but very pleasant. Question, what emotions did you feel during the experience? Answer, I was invaded by a great feeling of love, protection, and knowledge. And what an explanation that was. The light coming in and coming through, I was invaded by a great feeling of love, protection, and knowledge. She didn't even have a choice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Interesting. 
Question, did you suddenly seem to understand everything? Answer, I had the impression that they were initiating me by transmitted their universal knowledge. Question, did scenes from your past come back to you? Answer, when I left through this passage, I saw my life scrolling without really remembering it. But there's the certainty that it was about very pleasant moments of my life. Question, did scenes from the future come to you? Answer, they transmitted to me events of the future in particular about our religions. Question, what importance did you place on your religious slash spiritual life prior to your experience? Answer, moderately important. Question, what was your religion prior to your experience? Answer, Christian Catholic. I'm a believer, but didn't practice Catholicism regularly. Question, how have your religious practices changed since your experience? Answer, yes. I have faith in God and Jesus. I will never convert myself, but I'm more in harmony today with Jewish persons as they have a more open mind about that. Hmm. Question, what importance do you place on your religious slash spiritual life after your experience? Answer, greatly important to me. Question, what is your religion now? Answer, Christian Catholic. I believe in God and, all caps, Holy Spirit. Today, my faith is a certitude, but I am not able anymore to identify with my basic religion. Question, did your experience include features consistent with your earthly beliefs? Answer, since then, I feel the need to get closer to practicing Jewish persons without wanting to convert myself. Above all, I love the Holy Spirit, the messenger of God. This love is more in a spiritual sense than religious. Question. Did you have a change in your values and beliefs because of your experience? Answer. Yes. I studied Kabbalah and got closer to Jewish people. They are all very open about life after life. To whom you can speak to about this subject, if not with religious people. So I went to see the Catholic priest. They threw me out of their church, asserting that God will not make you experience this kind of thing. Question. Did you seem to encounter a mystical being or presence or hear an unidentifiable voice? Answer. I had a sensation of being surrounded with very ancient beings or consciousnesses who transmitted their love and knowledge to me. I physically saw my great-grandparents and my sister, who was a sparkling light. It was there that they talked to me. Question. Did you see deceased or religious spirits? Answer. I actually saw them. Question. Did you encounter or become aware of any beings who previously lived on earth who are described by name in religions? Answer. Uncertain. These consciousnesses were linked with all our religious guides and prophet. They were one, all caps, in the Holy Spirit, all caps. I only saw my great-grandparents physically, like I saw them when I was a child. They held hands. It's a memory that I had completely forgotten as they passed when I was seven for my great-grandmother and nine for my great-grandfather. It's a memory that came back to me since the experience that they often held hands. Question. During your experience, did you gain information about universal connection or oneness? Answer. Uncertain. Difficult to explain. There are several places or levels of evolution. For example, my sister was not in the same place that I was. It was like we were in our own solar systems. I and my grandparents were on one, and my sister evolved in another one. Question. During your experience, did you gain information about the existence of God? Answer. Yes. All of those consciousnesses that I felt were one, all caps, with all intelligence and, universe, and the universal knowledge. This means one with God, the seventh sense, all caps. Question. During your experience, did you gain special knowledge or information about your purpose? Answer. Yes, that churches will transform into temples and that the religions of God will pray at the same place. Mm-hmm. 
question. Did you believe that our earthly lives are meaningful and significant prior to your experience? Answer are possibly meaningful and significant. Mm. During your ex question, during your experience, did you gain information about the meaning of life? Answer, yes. Those who will not find awareness of love and compassion will suffer a lot. Mm. Question, do you believe in an afterlife after your experience? Answer, an afterlife definitely exists. Yes, today this my this experience is for me an evidence that death doesn't exist. I was aware that I was in the world of the dead and that my consciousness was still living outside of my body. Question, did you gain information on how to live our lives? Answer, yes. Every human being has a mission that it must endeavor to discover all along its life and that death is a break to go back to make an evolution. Question, during your experience, did you gain information about life's difficulties, challenges, and hardships? Answer, yes. Those who will not find awareness of love and compassion will suffer a lot. Question, during your experience, did you gain information about love? Answer, yes. Over there, it's love which is ruling. They are all together in harmony. It's the only energy that will save people on earth. Question. What life changes occurred in your life after your experience? Answer, large changes in my life. I am no more the same person. I have another personality and another life. I love solitude as I learn to respect myself before thinking about others or what moved me away from many persons of my surroundings. But I met other persons fitting in better with my new life. I'm still looking for my new path. Question. Have your relationships changed specifically because your experience? Answer, uncertain. Maybe this is also connected to my head injury. At least my doctors are claiming this. Well, no, Marie, we don't think that. We don't think that. Question, was the experience difficult to express in words? Answer, yes. It's more feeling rather than being explained. Dialogue is no dialogue but a kind of telepathy. It's the sensations and feelings being tenfold that we don't feel in your life. Question, how accurately do you remember the experience? Answer, it's so powerful is this experience that it is engraved forever. Question, do you have any psychic, non-ordinary, or other special gifts after your experience that you did not have before the experience? Answer, yes. I can sense the state of consciousness of a person if he or she has good or bad intentions or is sick or depressed. I can help him or her. Question. Are there one or several parts of your experience that are especially meaningful or significant to you? Answer. I have the impression of having a mission and that those consciousnesses from over there are still guiding me. Question. Have you ever shared this experience with others? Answer. Yes. Yes. I was talking about my experience upon waking in the hospital. They considered it as being a delirium. The, the priest had been unpleasant. I studied the Kabbalah, and I could talk more freely about it. But with my old friends, it's now difficult. We don't talk anymore. For two years, I didn't talk about it anymore. Then I created a support group, and today I am at CEPPI in Nice, which is a center of studies for parapsychology and unexplained phenomena. Wow, Marie, that's pretty cool. Maybe that's what you were supposed to do. <laughs> I don't know. Question, do you have any knowledge of NDEs prior to your experience? Answer, yes. I heard much about talking about the books, Life After Life, which made a large impression when it came out, but I never had read it. Nevertheless, it was in my bookcase as my sister gave it to me, but I had no influence on, but it had no influence on this subject. On the contrary, as my sister killed herself, believing perfectly well that she knew where she was going. Hmm. What did you believe about the reality of your experience shortly after it happened? Answer, experience was real, definitely real. The more time went by, the more it was a reality for me as I still could feel their love. Question. 
are there any question, other questions that we could ask to help you communicate your experience? Answer, questions concerning listening in hospitals. For example, would you like to talk about this experience with the medical community? As the trauma is more related with the lack of listening, which we experience about our experiences, and the disdain of doctors when we want to broach the subject, than about the experience itself. Thank you for your understanding and this questionnaire. End questions, end quote. And thank you, Marie. What a very interesting story. Lots of just really good stuff there to think about. Her sister and and other things. And there was there was some really great the levels I thought that she, how she explained that several places or levels of evolution, citing the example that her sister was not in the same place that she was with her great grandparents. So, and then at the end talking about how she thought her sister knew anyways, thank you, Marie. And thank you for listening. Hope you have a great day.